just looked like a little eye. It's gone now. Have you ever wondered how I start a new series of paintings? Then today is your lucky day. Hi there, I'm Janine. I'm an artist and I share my creative journey on this channel. Today I'm going to take you along while I paint the first layers of my brand new series and I'll let you in on the process. I usually like to start with the opposite of what I want to achieve. So if I want uh, light paintings then I start with dark colours. If I envision more neutral paintings at the end then I start with really bright colours because all that will shine through the layers and create interest in the final pieces. As you'll see, my process is very spontaneous. I basically just do what feels right in the moment and it's very intuitive. I am now going to start my new series. I have these um, eight wood panels that I've already painted something on a while ago that didn't go anywhere or it was just an experiment. So I'm going to use these as a base and I want to start by adding probably a solid layer of colour on most of them unless there's something I really like then I might just um, not cover it or just do a glaze which means a transparent layer. I'm just going to start and see how it goes. I don't usually start with a big plan, I just do whatever I feel like doing at the time. If you've seen my last video where I mix all the colours, you'll have seen these here. So I'm probably going to use one of these, um, I'm probably going to use each of these colours for a base layer um, and maybe on the other two I'll go for something brighter. If you've seen the video, um, you will remember that I mixed these from a limited palette which was um, the magenta, uh, ultramarine, um, yellow oxide and raw umber and white. Maybe this one's very dark so I might start with the dark colour on this one. Well, actually, it's already kind of reddish. I might start with that. I also want to use different tools for the different boards. So I've got a few things here like uh, a brayer that I can roll paint on with. Um, this catalyst blade, which is basically like a big spatula. And then a smaller spatula. This longer brush wider brush and just a smaller brush and I'll just see whatever I feel like at the time. So for this one I might start with this catalyst blade. This is very uh, satisfying. It's like icing a cake or something which I don't think I've ever done. And I don't want to cover everything, I don't want just a smooth surface, even though that might also be an idea. I might want to leave little bits of the previous surface shining through. So I like all the little bits that are coming through so it's not a super smooth colour. And I'll leave this to dry while I move on with the next one. On this one, I think I want to use this brush and go with more squiggly marks. This just adds a little bit more texture. Right, on to the next one. This has got a lot of texture on it. I could get rid of it if I used something like this flat edge. Well, not get, completely get rid of it, but make it a bit less obvious. Whereas if I use a brush, he'll keep all these ridges. I think I want to use the greenish colour for that. 
and probably use the catalyst blade again to get a little get rid of some of the texture. I think these bits here are quite interesting actually, the light and the dark, so I might leave that. I think that's good. It's got a little bit of texture still and some of the old pe parts are peeking through. Now for this one, I think it might be interesting to keep some of it, some of the pattern, because I quite like these cloudy bits here, um, but use a pink, bright pink this magenta and just do a glaze all over it. So it won't be as intense as this, but it will tint it. And for that, I think I'm going to use this larger brush. And I actually need some glazing fluid. When I want to um, put a transparent layer on something, which uh, is called glazing, I use this golden gloss glazing liquid. Um, and it's basically just making, it's got a little bit of um, retarder in it, which makes the paint dry slower, so I have more time to spread it evenly. And I like to just put the medium straight onto the painting rather than mixing it first, because I can't be bothered. And then put the pink straight in here. That should give us a nice transparent layer. It might look crazy now, but it's only the first layer and you probably won't even see any of this pink at the end. It looks pretty cool though, I'm quite happy with it. This one, again, it's got a lot of texture on it. I'm not sure I want to keep as much. So I think I'm gonna go for maybe this again, but I might try the thinner one. And I think I'm gonna cover it with a dark colour. So this one that's almost black. Right, that will do. For this one, I am going to use the beige. Now I might scratch into that with the skewer. I also have this palette knife that could work. So let's start with the skewer. And then the palette knife. Get rid of some of that here. That's all for this one. This one I quite like. Um, so I might do a glaze again, but try the uh, brayer this time. So I use my glazing fluid again. And then this light blue colour. And I mix it straight on the board again. Spread it out a little bit. And this has still got a little bit of the beige on it, and I'll just see what that looks like. Looks like it's covering too much, so I think I'll use a brush again instead. I think I have too much of the glaze on, so I'll wipe some off. Use a little bit of water as well. And I'm not applying very much pressure, just so I can spread it fairly evenly rather than move it around too much. You can now just see faint outlines of the previous shapes, which I think looks quite nice. For this last one, I also want to do just a glaze to keep some of this, what's happening here already. And I'm going to use the Ultramarine. I'm going to use this brush again. It just looks like a little eye. It's gone now. Ultramarine is usually quite a transparent colour anyway. 
have some neo color too under here which is water soluble so when I go over it it smudges and makes a really nice effect. Now once these are all dry I'm going to add probably some more crazy energetic marks to it. I like to start off my um, paintings with something a little bit out there so either a very bright colour or some crazy marks um, that I then can respond to and tone them down a bit. So I have some of these Neo Colour 2 uh, pastels. They're the um, Caran d'Ache Neo Colour 2 Aquarelle. Uh, this colour's flesh so I used some water here uh, with this brush that already had some or still had some of the blue on it. Just dabbed some of that on and then went over with the crayon and you can really see the difference in uh, where the crayon went over the wet surface versus the dry surface and I'll also add a little bit of water to it now to smudge some of the um, marks like down here and maybe I'll also use this pink one which is I think salmon and again I'll leave this to dry and then I'll spray it with some fixative so all the marks stay in place here I think I'll add a lighter colour and then scratch into it with some marks so I'll use this beige here and then I'll use this palette knife I may use some of these repetitive marks that I have on my mood board. I'll use a smaller brush, this one here, and I use a different colour. And I'll add some marks with that. And this is blending in with the beige, which I like. And as soon as I am not quite sure what to do, I stop and move on to the next one. This one here might not be 100% dry, but I'll try it anyway. I think I'll um, use this bright colour and smudge some on with this palette knife. Still got some of the lighter colours on it, but I don't mind that. Quite like that contrast of the very bright colour and the muted background. And if I use a colour, I try and dot it around the painting, so it's not just in one area. And then I'll take um, this darker neo colour, just make some more random marks and I'm going to smudge these a bit as well. And I'll leave that to dry. I want to get rid of some of this um, check pattern here. So I think I'm going to, I'm just going to add some of the green that I've got. Put that over with this brush. So that's some of the pink which I can also use. You can really see how even though this is pink it looks just like a greyish brown on here because next to the vibrant colour it looks even more muted and it makes the bright colour look even more bright. I'm also trying not to think too much where I put anything down. 
Again, I'm dotting this colour in different places. So it's not just in one area. And I'm going to scratch into that a little bit. And I want to use some of the beige. I think I'll use this palette knife. You might remember if you saw my mood board video that I want the series to be quite light overall. So I'm trying to decide whether I want to just gradually lighten this really dark one um, by just starting with darker colours, going slightly lighter or just go straight in with a light colour on top. I can always go back to a dark colour, so I think I'll use a light colour and scratch into it. Actually, that green would be really nice on this. And I think I'll add some of the beige as well. I haven't used any of the um, pure yellow oxide yet. That could be quite cool to add it on here. Um, maybe just with a little brush and see what happens. I'll try some water with this to make it a bit more like watercolour. I really like that actually. I can also try and spray it. That's literally just water. The thing with um, painting wet and wet like I'm doing here, wet paint into water basically, um, is you can't control it and it will look nothing like this when it dries. So I like it now but I might not like it later once it's dry. So this is almost like a glaze again, just with basically only water. Now the more you like something, the more difficult it is to destroy it, which is why I usually like to start with slightly crazy things. Um, here, I do quite like what's happening here already, um, but I think I'll add some dark neo colour which is uh, raw umber, which I actually use to mix these colours, and then maybe the green. Again, I'm doing these repetitive marks. And I want to use this brush again. I like how it mixes with the pink that's still in here. And I'll do a little bit of dry brushing, which is just um, when the paint is more dry and you don't have as much paint on your brush and you brush it. Yeah, you like that. It's very soft. And then you can also, if you dry brush over a texture very lightly, then the texture comes out. It's quite interesting how it brings out the texture. I'm really enjoying this blending, blending the colours into other colours. So if I enjoy something, I'll try and do more of that. This one's probably my favourite one so far, which is annoying because, again, it makes it harder to destroy it. So the best way to approach that, usually, I find is you get a big brush and just do some marks without thinking. Just wondering which colour. I think I'll go for a dark colour. I use this dark red. Just literally dip a brush in it and do a big swoop. That's changed it. 
just really like how it looks like that blue is glowing so I definitely want to keep some of that. I also really like this area with this dark mark and the um, brighter blue. What I also want to try and do is add some more um, harsher edges because everything's got very fuzzy edges at the moment. So I'll try and go in with some harsher edges. And again I can scrape into that. Let's even scrape it into the blue because it probably wasn't super dry yet. And I might already try and add some lighter bits. Let's use this pink and also add some white to it like I've done here. I'll mix that on my palette and use this smaller brush again. Add some white. I probably only need a little bit of colour. Maybe some a little bit more uncontrollable marks or uncontrolled marks. Especially at the beginning I try and I try to be not too careful, but it's quite difficult for me. This is blending again. All the boards that have the neo color on them, I am going to spray with some fixative. This is the one I use. Dig out fixative from Spectrafix. And you can buy it in a set with this um, continuous spray bottle, so I just fill it into this one. And I'm going to do this outside. You should do this outside or in a ventilated space. Because the fumes aren't great for you. So much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this glimpse into my process if you want to see how i mix the colors that i've used i made a whole video on creating that color palette and you can watch it up here if you found this video helpful please like it and consider subscribing if you want to see how i continue with my series bye bye